You are listening to the Vijar Manthan Podcast. Namaste and welcome to another episode of the Vichar Manthan podcast. My name is Sumit Sharma and it is my great honor to be hosting this project for you. The VM podcast is a Vichar Manthan project looking to explore modern day challenges, issues, society pressures, books and speak to special matter expertise through a dharmic lens. And what I mean by a dharmic lens is there is an ancient tradition which we're going to explore through today. And through that rich tapestry of information and knowledge on all types of things to do with society, there is great wisdom to be unlocked. And so through in-depth interviews with some of the best thinkers of our time, this podcast explores how we can better understand Dharma, better understand our lives, and recapture the ancient and classical ideals of sustainability, liberty, and flourishing. Tune in for an earnest conversation. The Vichar Manthan podcast is on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Audible, Amazon Music, YouTube, and Google Podcasts, and your favorite streaming platform. Today, I am very excited to introduce to you Professor Atul K. Shah. He's recently written a book called Inclusive and Sustainable Finance, Leadership, Ethics, and Culture. And today, Atulji will give us a little bit of information about the book, why it's important and relevant to today. But before I go and into that and, and we bring Atulji to the stage, I just want to read a testimonial, an endorsement that's been written on this book. Um, and I'm going to quote Martin Palmer, who's very influential. He's the BBC broadcaster and CEO. And he's written, uh, I think it's roughly 20 books. And this is what he says about this book. There is only one person in the world who could write a book which roams from indigenous traditions to Christianity from Jainism to Islam, while at the same time dismantling the myths and legends that lie behind contemporary economics. In a fascinating journey through the riches that lie just below the surface in all the great faith and cultural traditions, Professor Shah asks us to listen again to ancient wisdom which has more to say about who we were and why we need to invest in a sustainable world than any UN declaration or economist forecast. Wow. Read this and discover hidden treasures of wisdom and see a potentially radical, realizable, different world. Atulji, namaste and welcome to the podcast. Uh, namaste, Sumit, and thank you for having me. It's an honor. Thank you so much. I think that the privilege is ours and I'm keen to understand a little bit more about your book. But before we get into that, let's go Let's go to the man behind, uh, behind the book. What, what motivates you to create something like this? Where does... Professor Atul Geishar's journey begin in this in this aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Sumit. Uh, I was fortunate to have been born in Mombasa, Kenya, uh, and history is showing more and more how cosmopolitan Mombasa has always been, and it was during my uh, schooling days. Uh, uh, you know, between 1961 and 1980, so I was there for almost 19 years. And uh, during that time, I was exposed to a great uh, Dharmic community. My father was the leader of the Jain community mm -hmm. uh, in Mombasa. And really, now, as I've lived more than almost two thirds of my life in the West, you know, I, I, and I look back at that past, I see East Africa as a country geographically in between the East and the West. And I have over the years become, if you like, an intermediary or a translator of Eastern wisdom to the West. And this latest book is an example of that. Uh, but I think it was a combination of geography, of being dunked into a beautiful Dharmic tradition and a community at a time when, and we must remember this, the Africans never discriminated against us. They allowed mm. us to be ourselves. And in fact, they actually were enthralled by our culture and our community spirit. And uh, they loved working with us, working in our temples and community centers. And, and so that whole experience was very, very different from the experience of you know the West and uh, the canvas of the West. 
Sounds interesting. Sounds very fruitful and and colorful almost as well, right? Full of um, absolutely, absolutely. And 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 actually, not just visually colorful, but colorful in approaches to the way life is constructed, put together. And and this this key word that's ever prevalent these days is is sustainability, um, which which makes me uh, very interested. There's there's so much even in the world of work that I have. Um, sustainability is so ever important. And I think you you want to touch on that a little bit more in in terms of sort of finance and the way to be inclusive. So Adori, that that sounds really interesting. So let's let's talk about the book then in a little bit more detail. What was the process you had to go through to to bring something like this to fruition? What does one go through? Well, I am an academic, uh, and I have been for over thirty years. And this is the fifth of my books. Uh, we also write, uh, and I've written scientific uh, journal papers in top academic journals. I have also gone to conferences and I teach as well. And I've taught uh, in many in different parts of the world, uh, including the United States. And uh, so it's a combination of uh, professional training, of experience, and then, uh, of course, uh, of uh, writing and research skills. Uh, which come together. The publisher is Routledge, which is an internationally renowned academic publisher, and the book is available all over the world. Um, you know, so I have been uh, thinking about the issues I've written in this latest book for over thirty years, and uh, you asked me very quick uh, early on about my history and my background. Uh, Sumit, you will be surprised to know that the way the social sciences operate, you are supposed to hide your personality. Uh, and in a way, because that's subjective, that's biased, that's personal, right? And you're supposed to uh, somehow deal with an objective social science. Uh, you know, and uh, like in the case of economics, the objectivity says that everyone is selfish, <laughs> everyone is greedy, everyone is materialistic. And therefore, that is the science of the future. Now, you know, you and I and your listeners who know about the Dharmic tradition will fully understand that actually that is not true. Uh, mm. You know, and I can even say, you know, even about the Africans, that the Africans are also lovely people, you know, very innocent, not greedy or materialistic, very contented, and also peaceful, very peaceful and peace loving, right? So what happened to the huge diversity of cultures in the world and their way of seeing the world, their science, their wisdom, all of that has been diminished and stamped out by the neoliberal kind of capitalist worldview. And in some sense, and you know, Sumit, I say, that this book uh, is is kind of all uh, you know it reverses that and opens up the possibility for other cultures to talk about their truths about finance their wisdom on finance Excellent. including other faith traditions and i i deliberately wanted to do that because i felt that this is wrong it and i think for your audience many of whom are students at universities they often feel very frustrated when they go into the business school. And remember, business education is a primary. I mean, so many of our students go into business education. Absolutely. So I just want to I just want to dive in on, on something that you're saying here then. So it, it's it's we've got, you're painting this beautiful picture about the, the possibilities and the, and the future that we can have and why they have been diminished or why they're not taught in our education system and business schools. And you, you're saying your book opens the door for that to be so. So do we think that the current capitalist worldview, the, the way it's working, uh, isn't working? There are problems? Has it has some of these issues such as overconsumption and climate change come as a result of the current worldview within finance? Uh, without any doubt. I mean, the basic, you know, not just finance, but, you know, the, the science, scientific community have now admitted that we are living in the Anthropocene. So there is one species, the human species, which has done irreversible damage to this planet, right? Okay. So a very simple, uh, you know, a solution has to be that what is the culture of this species and what are the habits of this species and how should the habits change to create a sustainable world? 
unfortunately sumit that question is rarely being asked rarely. what what humanity is doing is jumping to a technological solution net mm. zero right mm. so we don't have to change ourselves we don't have to change our habits or behavior and we have this technology called uh, you know net solar energy or net zero and suddenly everything will be all right it it's interesting yeah there are lots of carbon targets and decarbonization efforts happening out yes. there you can buy carbon credits from a company so this company is allowed to distribute carbon credits because of some calculation it's worked out and if i'm trying to offset in my company i can just buy the credits i don't have to change my process it's just it's it's just pushing the the problem under a rug perhaps or at least pointing the finger and it's all about that bu bureaucracy then isn't it who's who's carbon is this mm -hmm. there was a podcast we recorded with a, a young lady called judy ling wong i'm not sure if you've seen it but she talks yes, about i have, I have uh, seen uh, it talking about greenwashing and and how we live in the world and how actually the now we're imposing fines upon the east for having their industrial revolution and creating carbon in the world and so the west is trying to punish or or, or charge for but did the west pay for their um, industrial revolution and all the carbon they threw out into the industry into the into the environment no scot free yeah. so the argument is they should pay for china and india to develop yeah uh, and go that way <laughs> Wow, deep, deep contrast. Absolutely. So, so uh, Azulji, let's let's go a bit deeper. And actually, I just want to bring this topic in because we talked about it earlier to introduce you, Atul K. Shah. You said it was quite important to have the middle letter. Can you just tell our listeners why? Well, the uh, the Indian word for that is parampara, right? We all belong to a history and a tradition. All human beings have a past. Mm. and that past the parents and the upbringing have influenced them good or bad right uh, again i think it is wrong to deny the parampara mm. and also uh, you know it is important to recognize it to understand it and in the context of sustainability sumit you know what are the traditions of the world which have sustained themselves surely surely we should look to them for guidance, right? Even that question is not being asked. You know, do you know, Sumit, for a long time, the West actually thought that vegetarianism was their invention. Wow, right? really? You know, you know, they had no understanding that there is, there is a whole heritage behind vegetarianism, that there are many cultures and communities of the world, India, of course, being uh, an epicenter. Absolutely. where vegetarianism for thousands of years has been seen as the right way to live right so why not go back and instead of talking about vegetarian recipes as a solution to the world connect the recipes to the living culture to the mm. wisdom the beliefs the philosophy mm. the habits uh, and the communities in which we were born and Sumit, when I did the research for this book, I interviewed top leaders from all over the world. Tell, tell, tell me about that. Who, who, what types of people were you speaking to? What was the process of doing research for something like this? Yeah, so I decided to do uh, something quite different from normal uh, kind of uh, uh, research, objective research, which is where they ask the same question to hundreds of people and then analyze the replies to the questionnaire. Instead, what I did is I did deeper conversations with a, a varied group of leaders and uh, for this audience uh, i think the indian uh, leaders i interviewed uh, dr abhay firodia whose father invented the auto rickshaw okay. the three wheeler which is now a global uh, cheap transport vehicle and has you know gone has uh, sold in the hundreds of millions mm -hmm. and uh, uh mr abhay sorry uh, um, mr vallabh banchali who is the founder of enam securities an investment bank in india uh, and he is regarded in india as one of its uh, most trusted financial experts so these were the two people I interviewed from the Dharmic traditions from my book. I interviewed some others as well. Satish Kanabar from Barclays in UK, who is also who is a Ugandan Asian refugee and the tremendous work he did. And, and you, what I found when I talked to these people was that 
they were actually living their culture and their values and that has influ that had influenced their business decisions wow. their uh, business success uh, but unfortunately none of this is in the textbooks it's okay so that there's something perhaps missing from from our education system and our current financial policies um and you're talking here a little bit also about how you've engaged in diversity you say morality and sustainable practices emerge when we engage with diversity and difference rather than suppress them i think we've talked a little bit ha about how some knowledge has perhaps been suppressed and how you're talking about the almost a resurgence of that to bring that to, to bear yeah. so so what changes do you think are required in in finance and accounting education to address the modern day challenges uh, fantastic question, Sumit. It just shows how much homework you've done. <laughs> I have um, a fantastic research team behind me. It's, it's not. Uh, yeah. So, so the edu. You know, I if you remember earlier, I said economics assumes everyone is greedy, everyone is selfish, everyone is materialistic, and you got a whole education system built around those assumptions and, 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 so and an educational say, network. Yeah. Innately. I yeah. probably am. I'm just thinking, as you said that, I just thought about my journey. I, did, I studied business. I did a degree with business IT. I work within and around business. But I it's, I would, can't say I consciously have have chosen a way. It's just the system that I've been brought up in. And But I, I remember when I used to work at a, a tuition firm, I started the recycling initiative. I saw how much paper and cardboard we'd throw away. Like what's, and even I started a car share scheme. So many people come from the same direction to work. Why can't we? Where has that come from? Is that me trying to step outside that little box and think sustainably? Um, I I think it, again that comes from your upbringing, your dharmic conscience. I mean, there are so many simple words which are not in finance, accounting, or economics textbooks. For example, the word trust, the word conscience. Uh, you know, the word uh, peace or nonviolence, you know, Ethics. the word compassion, right? These are just totally absent from these textbooks, which effectively show you how they've stripped off human ethics and values and cultures and stampeded on them in creating this science. And Sumit, your question is not just about what is taught at university. It mm. is also about the professional qualifications, mm. you know, whether it's a certified financial analyst or whether it is uh, Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales, these are massive professions. You know, they are, they are training the world's accountants, bankers all over the world. And what is their education philosophy and practice? And they are all now struggling with ethics. They're all talking about ethics. But Sumit, the way they are teaching ethics is very transactional and mm. very technical that so there is sense. no connection between the ethics that are taught and people's lived beliefs and experiences and community spirit that they bring to the table so so Atoji, tell me what are you saying are you saying your book solves the problem it, it answers the critics it, it helps us live more sustainably the book is a, is an academic book, so it is okay. aimed at other scholars and uh, experienced and reflective professionals, right? Uh, uh, to help them to understand the meaning of sustainable finance and how there is a, a very profound relationship between culture and finance, which is being missed out altogether, right? Okay. So in that sense, what I want to do, Sumit, uh, is to change these textbooks this thinking the theories of finance and open up a whole new way of looking at finance which will solve the sustainability well not solve at least address the sustainability challenge not in a cosmetic way Fine. but in a substantive way so i i i need let's try and bring that to life a little bit okay so you 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 it's an academic book um, research institutes, perhaps, and and policymakers will read this and say, "Okay, here's a great way to do something. Let's let's engage further and create uh, um, ways of working." What what happens next? How does the layman see the impact of that? And do they even need to? I guess I guess that's a deeper question I'm asking. Why do I feel like what I what I contribute, I need to see the results of 
perhaps <laughs> well you're being honest uh smith <laughs> uh, but uh, unfortunately the layman is being deeply affected by economics and finance for example inequality the cost of living cost of energy uh, food shortages um the the insecurity of jobs right um you know the debt of mortgages i mean all interest rates all these things are affecting the layman and in a way the layman feels the pain but unfortunately is not not able to articulate the defense right I, and this is where i feel i step in but can I also say, Sumit, since you have been asking such beautiful and profound questions, that my journey has not at all been easy. Okay. It has been extremely difficult, very challenging. Uh, and one of the main reasons for that is when you try and stand up and do something different, you, you become, you know, you become visible. But at the same time, if your color is not white, then this visibility becomes a problem. Wow. So, so, you know, we have to talk about racism in economics, racism in finance, racism in accounting, and what happens when an academic, I mean, you know, the, the Jains are regarded as one of the world's best business communities, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And guess what? I'm the only business professor who is Jain in this country. What kind of statement is that? Wow. Given, given how scholarly we are as a community, given how intelligent and educated we are. And, and if I say to you, Sumit, that it has been a huge struggle for me to get where I am, so you can understand the layers and the filters and the politics and the abject bullying and discrimination that goes on in universities. Universities where we pay thousands, tens of thousands of mm. pounds each for the fees, you know, and we have absolutely no influence on their uh, structure, their institutions, and their recruitment policies, and the way they treat our community and our experts. You know, we have, as, as you rightly say, Sumit, that the Dharmic tradition and the Dharmic science is one of the oldest living cultures of the world. That's true. You know, right. we, bring, we bring wisdom purely through our tradition to the workplace, you know but the workplace treats us like this interesting concepts here and and you you paint a very detailed picture atulji just of how society is built up and and uh, thank you for sharing about how challenging it's been for you uh, and and for us all really and and i'm also hearing within what you're saying a almost a call to action to some of the communities that come from ancient civilizations that have wisdom to to step forward to represent to resurge, um, to Id identify, do our own homework, and then share it with the world. This is the world is for all of our living, and if the current systems are not working, and we can see, and just the way you paint, you know, mortgage rates, this, that, energy crisis is literally it's happening now, uh, and you're saying we have the answers to some of those. So uh, there's a quote I want to read from the book that says, "The cultural root for millions and even billions of people in the world is morality, fairness." and interdependence um, there's an ancient there's a sanskrit uh, shloka saying that i that i know of, vasudeva kutumbakam uh, which says the whole world is one family um, so we need to look after each other and the, the nature around us um, sumit the india as president of the g20 has made that its central slogan vasudeva oh. kutumbakam right Thanks. but again when you use the word family the way the world understands it is family means human family right mm. actually india is not saying that india is saying family with all living beings right and that is exactly the opposite of the anthropocene mm. that is extremely urgent and necessary for the time that we live in and you know, Sumit, through my academic work, I engage with scholars all the time. And I'm really sad to say that they, unfortunately, have been so wired in an anthropocentric way that they are unable to see the world outside the human uh, mm. progression and saving the human species, you know. So we have 
and all all the listeners uh, you know brought up in in faith in a dharmic uh, conscience with a dharmic conscience have something unique to contribute at this particular time in the world's history that's a that's a great way of putting that and a massive call to action to our, to our listeners so again if you're listening to the vichar month and podcast here today and think wow you know there's there's something deeply rooted here my uh, my culture my tradition has something to offer um Atul G here is saying we need to do something about that we need to change that but you know i i think they've tried the west has tried there are things like corporate social responsibility do you think they they haven't worked why have they not worked out uh sumit uh, again there's considerable research which shows that corporate social responsibility is essentially a big spin machine uh i I'll, I'll just give you a simple example facebook uh facebook's core model is advertising and the attention economy right so it wants to grab your attention and it wants you to stay on its platform as much as possible right now when we do that that means we have less face to face time with one another we have less time to uh, you know have a dialogue have to uh, to be with one another etc so it, its business model is actually to damage society when you really look at it you know it's a very uh, sort of greed based business model and then it throws a few pennies at corporate social responsibility now isn't that a contradiction i see where you're going and i'm sure it's more than a few pennies but okay i'm I, talking I, in relative terms relative no, to its profits yeah uh, so does that mean we can measure the the damage oh there is lots of research which has looked at this already i mean there's a whole book called the end of corporate social responsibility which effectively shows you know after years of study that it is really a spin machine you know and uh corporation and then there's other research which shows that corporations have become highly political animals you know so they are very large very global they don't want to pay tax anywhere mm -hmm. and uh, they want to extract profits from everywhere and if possible they want to also influence the political process and uh, mm -hmm. and the election process so so therefore we have now become uh, instead of uh, you know democratic uh, countries we have we are all being ruled by these autocratic multinational corporations e elon musk recent released something called twitter files or something some of the detailed information behind behind what twitter used to do and what which us presidential elections it, it helped in sway I'm, this is not my words you know, this is what i've read online uh, you know validated for yourself but this stuff's come out and i think that sings true for what you're saying there's a couple of documentaries on black mirror if you watch that on netflix as well shows you a a darker side of of reality humanity let's uh i want to move into something called the rapid fire round uh where i ask you a quick quick set of questions so our listeners can get to know you a bit better and then we can dive back into the book so Adoji, if you were stranded on a deserted island what three items would you take with you and why oh definitely a book uh, a wise book uh, because I love reading um, some uh, classical music because I feel it uh, gives me peace uh, nice. and helps me to <laughs> stay peaceful and third thing would be I guess uh, something to wrap myself up on uh, you know on, uh, in in cold weather yeah awesome thank you and so then do you have a favorite book uh, a favorite book not one no uh how many <laughs> you okay. know, if, you were, if you were to recommend library. someone to read a book who's listening today what book would you recommend them to read uh, on the concept of business and sustainability uh which is obviously my special interest area uh ooh, good question uh but the uh, I mean, there are some, you know, there are a, a range of writers. Uh, Robert Reich, I'm reading at the moment, who is an American, uh, and he's quite active on Twitter as well. And he's an eco a political economist and very critical of the American, uh, uh, you know, capitalistic system. So that he would be uh, one good person to read. Uh, he, he writes extremely well. Uh, but there are others, you know. Um, 
the, some of the books are older, like Joel Bakan. Actually, he's written a, a book called The New Corporation, uh, re, which has just come out, which is very easy to read and very relevant. But he also wrote a very pioneering book back in 2004 called The Decorporation, which basically said that the corporation is a psychopath. Uh, and uh, you know, he, he basically he looks after after twenty years, he looks back at the same theory and finds, unfortunately, things have gotten worse, not okay. better. So. You're, I told you, you're um, you're here to shake up the system. I think so. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite quote? A favorite quote. Uh... Uh, I, what, one of the things I emphasize is understanding the nature and limits of money. Okay. So I and you know everyone is being affected by money. You know there were uh, so the quote would be uh, yeah uh, understand that money cannot uh, buy you love. Uh, happiness and peace and fulfillment wow deep deep wisdom there thank you so much for sharing what goes into your perfect breakfast smoothie breakfast smoothie i don't have breakfast what, smoothie. what goes into your perfect breakfast uh perfect breakfast would be porridge uh okay. with uh, with fruits uh, to go with it excellent if you could have one superpower what would that be one superpower oh that would be to uh, educate the world in a dharmic way at a stroke <laughs> very nice i've i've heard that one before <laughs> um what's the best piece of advice someone has given you um if you do not have people uh, senior people to protect you in your organization uh, you will not go far wow that says a lot if you had to fight one horse-sized chicken or 10 chicken-sized horses which would you pick Ten chicken-sized horses or one horse-sized chicken <laughs> i don't like fighting <laughs> so pass good answer okay I'll, I'll take that can you describe for us a moment in your life where your paradigm shifted mm, yeah uh, a, a moment where my paradigm shifted uh, i would say yeah around the late 1980s when i started the young jane's uh, global organization um that's when i discovered that actually uh, the, a lot of the the problems that we face in the west have some beautiful solutions uh, in the dharmic uh, tradition and i you know and and we started with a group of young people and it went global organically it wasn't because we sought out to make it a global movement but just because we did it so authentically it just naturally went and that's what i say about this book as well that when finance is conducted with the right values it will naturally grow and spread and uh, bring sustainability you know i develop an organic a new organic theory of finance excellent thank you for sharing Atoji, I give my guests an opportunity to make a commitment here on the podcast. So is there something in your life that you are trying to do? Is there a habit you're trying to break or a habit you're trying to create? Is there something you'd like to commit to uh, in, in on the Vichar Mantan podcast here today? Yeah, I mean, I want to focus on disseminating this research widely and, and with courage. Uh, not to uh, not to be shunned by criticism uh, listen to it but not to uh, lose my confidence as a result and to open a variety of different doors for this you know so just to give you an example this week I was in the offices of the Financial Times and I was speaking to various editors there I didn't have any specific agenda to say okay I want you to write about my book no mm -hmm. I wanted to share my ideas with them and I do feel that as an as a global medium and a high quality respected medium, it can do much more around sustainability and finance. And and so I will persevere on that relationship that I've opened. 
that's a that's a deep commitment thank you for sharing and which i and looks forward to seeing uh, what, what you bring and i'll be seeing you at an event next week actually where i think you're telling uh, similar stories to the students uh, here yeah. in the uk so i look forward to that i look forward to seeing you there and so my final question in the rapid fire round and i think it will lead us into a greater conversation what does sustainability mean to you it means uh you know uh, passing on uh my heritage uh, to future generations uh, through education but also living uh, in a way where uh, i i leave a light footprint on the planet thank you for sharing uh, atul ji and if you're just tuning in this is the retired month and podcast speaking to professor atul k shah about his latest book inclusive and sustainable finance leadership ethics and culture so atul ji tell me what are the uh, top three things one should think about when diving into a, an academic book like yours um firstly i would say that uh yeah don't you don't have to read it from cover to cover uh you know look at uh, the index or look at some themes which personally appeal to you and and flick through the book uh the second is uh look for stories i mean my book has got lots of true stories uh, through the interviews and stories are always easier to read the third is that uh show you know again i mean uh, you know if you are feeling uh, the pain of being taught uh, a, a, an economics or a science which does not agree with your own personal beliefs and values then definitely use that as an impetus to read the book but then also don't stop there show it to your professor and ask your professor why is it that this kind of stuff is not in the curriculum i think if you can do that that would be a, a fantastic step uh, in in getting your own wisdom and culture noticed reflected in the classroom and perhaps even showcased as a role model for civilization that is um very motivational to hear very inspirational um i just want to read another quote that i've uh, that i'm looking through here um by alpesh patel obe i, I met him uh, just recently actually at one of the city hindu network events uh, where we were also were at one of those events at the so he uh, uh, for those that don't know alpesh patel global finance pioneer government advisor and investor and he says this about atul ji's book here an outstanding must read for everyone with an interest in quality insightful high value perceptive writing on finance leadership ethics and sustainability basically all of us culture is central to finance and atul not only proven this but also shown how it can be made sustainable rather than extractive professor shah is a world authority in the field and has undertaken substantial first hand research as well as pioneering interviews and analysts into a topic wrought with muddled views this book will help you clarify your own actions in what needs to be done for your organization. So Atuji, the people are singing the praises of this and and the book that you do and the work that you do. What would what would your naysayers say? What's the number one argument that could be presented against what you're saying and and what's your comeback to that? Um you know it's interesting that uh, i haven't um, met naysayers in fact re last week i was presenting this research in front of top economics and accounting professors and you know in my speech i use words like economics has been a chainsaw on nature and society and you will not believe the reception i got some of the you know nobody disagreed with me and some of the economists said that they were they found my speech to be the most memorable so i think there is hope and you must remember economics professors are also parents one of the professors actually said both my daughters are vegetarian you know they are idealists it's their future you know we may have trashed the planet but for them they want to have and preserve a, a, a sustainable planet so i do think there is a lot of hope uh if people are critical of my research uh, they haven't seen they don't seem to have come forward uh, but at the same time i do think that it if the you know it does take time to understand where i come from especially if you have been trained in a very technical monocultural 
uh, sort of uh, materialist way. It's not easy to understand what I'm saying. Sure. No, totally. Thank you for explaining. The five chapters within the book are called Morality, Tradition, Community, Experience and Purpose. Could you just touch on each of those for me? Yeah, I think uh, I'm so glad you uh, said that, Sumit. You open any other finance textbook and there would be equations, mm -hmm. in the, there would be formulae. Like, and, and look at these chapters. Morality is the first chapter. That means that finance should begin and end with morality. In fact, actually, society should begin and end with morality and finance should serve society in that way. You know, the second chapter on tradition is exactly what we talked about in terms of parampara, right? Sure. That, you know, heritage is important. You know, how you brought up, uh, what values, what your uh, cultural inheritance it does affect the way you behave in finance. Then the third chapter on community, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, and and community is is like the samaj, you, you know, is is where you build relationships, where you connect with one another, and where you actually feel whole, you know. And you know, it, so much research shows that children are social beings, you know, they really come alive in communities. So we are all part of communities, those communities are being destroyed, but we need to revive them. And that's what you're doing with VM uh, and the NHSF is doing on campuses all around the country. And I'm extremely proud of all that work. Um, the last chapter is purpose. Uh, I think I missed one chapter, but purpose is becoming the new mantra of business. The business should be purposeful. But again, I see a lot of that as being spin. You know, people should be purposeful and mm -hmm. then they should then use their own purpose and motives and a sustainable vision, take it to organization and help change the direction, the culture and the methods of operation of the organization. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. So Ataji, this has been a, a very fruitful conversation. I've certainly learned a lot. I, even though the book isn't aimed at me, I, I'm going to have a much deeper look into some of the areas you're talking about. My wife's an accountant, I'm sure, from a financial perspective, she'll be very interested. I know people that work in business. I deal with businesses all the time. And so if 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 what you claim that the answers are here in this book and we can change the way it goes, I'm, I'm sure people out there need to listen to it and read it. And and I look forward to diving further. So, uh, Adoji, could you maybe share your your final words of wisdom or or some some pearls of knowledge or a call to action for all the listeners of the Vichar Mantan podcast here today? I just uh, say to them that uh, dig into your own roots and heritage uh, and uh, understand your own past because that will strengthen you. That will give you a sense of self-confidence. Uh, also, don't uh, dismiss uh, faith and faith traditions and philosophies with like economics has done uh, that is why we are in the mess we are in so don't dismiss that and if possible try to experience faith not just uh, technically study it uh, because experiencing uh, going into a temple or a gurudwara or a, uh, or a mosque or a church experiencing that is something quite uh, different uh, to just uh, studying it yeah Thank you very much, uh, Atulji, for, for enlightening us with this knowledge that you have, uh, the depths you've gone to. You've said the struggle of writing a book, an academic piece for people to learn about. And so encouraging everyone to take a look. It's available globally on inclusive and sustainable finance, leadership, ethics and culture by Professor Atul K. Shah. So Atulji, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have you and, and hopefully we'll speak again soon. Yeah, thanks to you too. Thanks for asking those beautiful questions. And I look forward to meeting uh, some of the audience members uh, in the time coming. Ab yeah, Absolutely. Thank you, Atoji. And thank you to everyone listening at home. Uh, if, you, if you do go read it or if you do have further questions, please let us know. I would love to hear from you. The Vichar Mantan podcast is available on all streaming platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, audible google po podcasts and youtube and if you like content like this if you want to listen to in-depth interviews with some of the best thinkers of our time the podcast explores how we can better understand dharma better understand our lives and recapture the ancient and classical ideals of sustainability liberty and flourishing tune in for an earnest conversation this was the vijara Mantan podcast 
My name is Sumit Sharma. Namaste. Mm-hmm.